Good morning. Welcome to uh, the Into the Girls' Day School Trust, better known as the GDST webinar. Um, welcome back to those of you who've seen our webinars before. This is the, oh gosh, I'm losing count, fourth or fifth in our series where um, the Independent School Show and Bonus McFarlane uh, are bringing you access to schools. Otherwise, that would be um, possible during our shows, which understandably are not happening physically in 2020, like so many other things have been uh, COVID corrupted, unfortunately. But this is a fascinating format. My name is Will Petty. I'm a co-director at Bonus McFarlane and the Independent School Show. Um, Bonus McFarlane is an educational consultancy and tuition specialist, and we specialise in putting children from all over the world and Britain into uh, these wonderful schools uh, that frequently exhibit with, with all of our shows as well. Um, today is quite special because all of our schools are coming from the formidable GDST. And we're very lucky to be joined by the head teachers of several of their stables. It's a very uh, large group of schools, but I'm gonna leave all of that fascinating information to Dr. Kevin Stannard, who is prepped and ready in an extremely smart location, I can see on my screen. Today, we are going live to all the schools. I'm gonna leave it to Kevin to introduce you more fully to the GDST and then to our first school, Sutton High, and then I will um, join in after that. There will be a Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom. Please feel free to punch in questions throughout the event. Uh, if you label it to an individual school, they will they will get back to you. Um, and also, um, just to remind you, there's no full Q&A at the end. So the questions today, please, um, are all online. Uh, Dr. Kevin Stannard, uh, Director of Innovation and Learning at GDST, over to you, sir. Thank you, Will. Now, look, it's a pleasure to introduce a session that involves 10 schools from the Gold State School Trust. Now, each of those schools has its own distinctive character, and you'll be hearing a little bit about that in a moment. But I want to concentrate on three big things that they have in common. The first is that they share a distinguished history spanning 140 years as pioneers and innovators in education. The second is that they're all excellent schools, yes, but there's a bonus. They have unrivaled expertise in and dedication to the cause of the education of girls and young women. And that goes, that includes, but goes well beyond the academic. The third characteristic that they all share is that they share a spirit of collaboration. And that came to the fore during the COVID crisis. It means that when a girl joins a GDST school, she joins a network of 25 like-minded schools, 19,000 fellow students and 70,000 alumni. And in practice, that means that they have access to courses, competitions, and awards that bring girls together from across the network. They get to attend pupil events that range in scope and scale to from junior science days to the incredibly inspiring, inspiring females conferences that we've run annually for the last few years. And they get access to continuing support and guidance from this impressively powerful network of alumna across the country and across the world. Just to finish with an example of the power of that, a couple of weeks ago, one of the schools represented here held an online economics and environment conference that had speakers, uh, headline speakers, for leading academics and practitioners from across the world. The conference was the brainchild of a pupil at the school. It was facilitated by teachers at the school and had technical support from colleagues here at Trust Office, and it was offered as an experience to girls across the Trust. Hundreds responded to that and had a magnificent day uh, at the cutting edge of economics and the environment. That's just a, a very quick snapshot of what's accessible to students across the network, but they're joining individual schools. And after that introduction, it's a great pleasure to hand over to the first of the schools, I think, which is Sutton High and Beth Dawson. Good morning everyone and uh, welcome to Sutton High. I'm joining you from our STEAM building um, and I'm hoping that over the next five minutes I can give you a 
small flavour of what makes our school special, what makes us unique here, um, and how we focus on individual girls and bringing out their fullest potential. Our values, courage, truth and joy, have been part of our school for 137 years. And that means that they are as relevant now as they were to those pioneers who set up the school in the first place, who set up a school to assist girls in forging ahead, in forging their own path. And that is what we do here. So, as I mentioned, I'm here in the STEAM building and I'm going to go into two lessons this morning. They are not expected us so it could be interesting um i'm going to take you first into our makerspace design studio um where i believe it's a year eight lesson um and we're just going to take a small look at what the girls are doing good morning girls is there any way that one of you could tell me what you're doing please yeah we're doing pop-up blocks and we're just you know brainstorming doing. so you're making pop-up blocks yeah. and you're brainstorming excellent are on your tables yeah, we made a Memphis um, like uh, furniture. Okay, so in this room you designed some furniture based on Memphis? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's one of our classrooms. Um, I'm now going to take a walk up the stairs. Thank you very much girls. Well done. Um, and I'm hoping to be joined by some year eights who are going to talk to me about courage, truth and joy. Do you want to come with me girls? We're going to walk up the stairs to another room and hope to be able to show you into another of our um, STEAM rooms. So, Sophia, can you tell me about one of our values, please? So, to me, courage means to be brave, to not be afraid. And to most definitely be that one person who stands up from the crowd, trying something how challenging Fantastic. Come, do you want to walk with me? Because with me? I know we've only got two minutes left, so I'm being told the time. Uh, what, what value would you like to talk about? And well, I'm going to be talking about truth. And I think that truth is about being honest with yourself and with others. And being honest with yourself is really great because it will help you learn from your mistakes. And having others around you that are honest is also a really great environment to be in because it will help you make trustful relationships with everyone. Thank you. Okay, who's going to come with me now? Isla, we're nearly at the top of the stairs. So do you want to tell me about a value? Yeah, okay, so for me, learning with joy means that all the teachers are really kind and make all the lessons really engaging and interesting. You can also tell very clearly that they're really passionate about the subjects that they're teaching. And also learning with your friends every day makes me happy too. Okay, brilliant. We're nearly we're nearly to the other room. So Michelle, we can talk about any of the values because the girls have each talked about courage, truth and joy. So it's up to you which one you want to talk about. For me at Sutton High, I think courage means really embracing new challenges. Uh, not without fear, but with it, and really acknowledging that fear, whether you're in the classroom or not, always raising forward. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, girls. You can head back to your lessons and we will pop into um, one of our other STEAM rooms up here, which is um, our DT workshop. Can you guys quiet so, uh, They are working here and I will attempt to ask some of them uh, what they are doing. Girls, who can tell me what you're doing? Yeah. Hannah, do you want to tell us? Um, so some of us are completing our previous project of Netflix Design, where we make models of our own Netflix Design. Um, and this was a design group, and they made all sorts of colour clashing of these shapes and um, everyday objects. Great, can um, I see it? Can I see some of them? Can we see some? Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> Mine's meant to be a rainbow shell. Oh, okay, fantastic. Thank you. All right, we will pop out of here now. Um, this building has eight science labs. It has uh, two DT workshops. It has a computer science lab, um, and it also has our art studios um, in the building. So um, the girls do spend a long time here. Most of their lessons are in in this building. Um, so hopefully that's given you a very brief flavour. It's very difficult in five minutes um, to give you a flavour of what the school is about, but we are a dynamic, diverse, colourful community here. And I very much hope you'll come and visit us uh, when time allows and when COVID allows. So thank you very much. Beth, thank you. That's Beth Dawson, the headmistress there at um, Sutton High School, bravely charging around um, heavily concreted classrooms. So apologies there if uh, your uh, picture was a little bit stuttery, but I hopefully, like for me, the sound was excellent. Um, and we'll move swiftly on. We're keeping nice tidy time now. So we're now going to go to uh, Headmistress Finola Kennedy at Wimbledon High School. 
and apparently from an office overlooking the playground and the STEM tower. Very exciting. So um, I'm just going to slow down a little bit because I'm not seeing their feed coming up. Um, and there it is. So well done, uh, ladies. And uh, over to Finola at Wimbledon High School. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wimbledon High School. I am Finola Kennedy, the head here, and I'm with Vera, one of our deputy head girls. Thank you so much, Beth, over in Sutton. Kevin was right that as a group of schools, we are united in our dedication to the education of girls and young women, and STEAM, as you've heard from Beth, must play a major part in that. And so I am delighted to say I'm sitting here at the top of our new STEAM tower, bringing together science, technology, engineering, the arts and maths, it symbolizes our commitment to interdisciplinary learning. And it's the ideal venue for me to talk to you briefly today about breadth versus depth in education. It brings up questions such as, how soon should a school demand that students choose between subjects? Is it better to be an all rounder aged 15, even if you know full well, you'll never take a language onto A level? or need to understand levers and physics if you're hoping to be an English teacher, speaking from personal experience there. Is it preferable to study three or four A-level subjects in depth or to tackle the more broad ranging international baccalaureate? Well, education is about preparing us for life. And we know as adults, neither work nor life requires us to put our different subject hats on according to task. For example, getting from one place to another, we don't think, I'm doing some geography now, and we're using the sat nav, oh, but it can't be geography, because now it's computer science, or I'm using a bit of my D of E skills. How confusing. Second, academic subjects do not exist within their own silos, distinct from one another and boundaried off. When I was reading English at university, my tutor didn't say to me, don't worry about reading Malthus's texts on Victorian poverty to support your reading of Dickens, because Malthus was a statistician, and you're not doing maths, just stick to the stories. It is absolutely the case that subject areas overlap, intermingle, and speak to each other, and indeed must do so if learning and scholarship is to be genuinely enriching. Third, we know better, now more than ever, but in terms of lifelong learning, our students need flexible, agile thinking, an ability to see above, around, and through a problem, an enthusiasm for collaborating and making connections, both with other people and in our thinking. And these skills can absolutely be developed, whether you're taking German GCSE, Chemistry A-level, or English at IB. And that's where the STEAM agenda comes in, placing the arts right at the heart of those STEM subjects, so that creativity and connection in and between all subjects becomes the focus, not simply the mastery of the subject itself. It makes for learners who are fully equipped for the challenges and excitements of the outside world. And now, who better to hear from than one of our own students who is going to discuss exactly this topic? In April 1815, a volcano called Mount Tambora erupted in modern-day Indonesia. The eruption could be heard over 1,600 miles away, and the ash that spread over 800 miles left the surrounding area in complete darkness for two whole days. What followed was a time of great distress, but it was also a time of great creative discovery. The smoke from the eruption spread across the world, and by the summer of 1816, it had spread to Europe. 1816 became the second coldest year on record since the Middle Ages, and dust clouds disrupted weather patterns across all of the Northern Hemisphere. 1816 became known as the year without the summer. I find the aftermath of this explosion terribly fascinating. There are so many lenses you could view it through. Fitting with the times, you could view it as an epidemiologist and see how the potato famine in Ireland led to the spread of typhus fever, which eventually killed over 44,000 people. Or how in India, disrupted monsoon seasons gave rise to a new strain of cholera, which eventually spread overseas and killed many more. 
Alternatively, you could view it as a historian or a doctor or a politician and see that it was an important development in our modern day opioid epidemic. Because when rice crops failed in the Chinese province of Yunnan for the third year in a row, they planted poppies as a more profitable and reliable alternative. Or perhaps you could view it in the eye of a musician or a writer. The extreme dark and cold of this period gave birth to some of our most cherished pieces of music and literature to date. Works by Schubert, Byron and Shelley to name a few. Napoleon was de defeated at Waterloo just weeks after the eruption. And it didn't help that the dark and stormy weather made many people think that the apocalypse was coming. In fact, it took until the 1960s for scientists to understand the correlation between these strange weather patterns and the 1815 volcanic eruption. But this you need to understand geography and statistics. And I hope you can see where I'm going with this. There was one event, a volcanic eruption, but it can be viewed through so many different interconnecting lenses. I find great comfort in this narrative because despite the blazing July heat in 2020, I think we can all relate to the feeling of having the year without summer. But it will take more than biologists to solve this pandemic. To recover from a great global crisis such as this, we need true teamwork, communication and creativity. There has never been a greater time for the scientists and arts to come together. Thank you, Vera. And I don't know about you, but I feel much better knowing that our future is in the hands of these amazing young women of their generation. And we look forward very much to welcoming you through the gates of our school once the pandemic has indeed been solved and allows us to do so. Have a brilliant rest of the day. Thank you very much, Wimbledon High. Thank you, Vera. That was most most interesting. And uh, thank you, um, Fianula. Uh, lovely to hear from both of you there. And uh, glad to see the weather's holding up and um, overcast but dry, which is very good for these sorts of things. Normally we arrange the sun, but it's very expensive. So we've had some budget cuts this week, um, but hopefully our next webinar, the sun will return. Moving swiftly on then to... Uh, South London and Croydon High School, where we will be joined by headmistress Emma Patterson. Uh, I've gone and pressed the wrong button again here, so I can't see they are there. So brilliant, wonderful. Um, perched delicately and ready to go. Emma, over to you. Hi there, thank you very much. I'm Emma Patterson, the head of Croydon High School and GDST uh, in South Croydon. I can't promise lots of sun, I can promise a nice view though. Um, our school mantra is every girl every day and this encapsulates our belief that each journey for each student is unique and enjoyable in different ways. I think alongside cru crucial considerations like pastoral care and academic challenge, it's really important for prospective parents to consider how does the school create an aspirational environment for its young people through the function of its careers department. We call it progression in futures and it's fundamental to our philosophy. Um, amongst the tailspin of change that COVID-19 has propelled into every sector, um, we as a school are thinking carefully about what the workplace of 2030 now looks like, given our current year sevens will, at the end of the decade, probably be starting their first jobs. So we describe our students as confident and engaged, compassionate, passionate and ambitious young women. So through our futures and progressions department, how do we ensure that Croydon High students stand out and impress and leave a lasting legacy in their future workplaces? Well, firstly, we look relentlessly towards the future. Awareness of the workplace in different sectors and encouraging the idea that girls can do anything they want to is absolutely crucial. Understanding the idea of a network, learning how and why to actively network and then ensuring that by the time students leave in sixth form, they have the skills to engage with the 70,000 plus GDST alumni using the platforms available to reach GDST students through sixth form, university employment and, and beyond school. So within that network, valuing mentorship, both as a mentor of the future and in terms of finding a mentor to support each individual is also really important to us. And that means that alumni play a hugely significant role in our programme. We believe that you can be what you see 
but without role models to inspire, it's harder for students to create a vision of what they could become. So inspirational industry leaders and women who can explain to our students how they have forged successful careers for themselves are a really important part of our programme. We place the onus very much on the individual taking responsibility for her own progression with intervention and support for this to eventually become second nature to them. Leadership opportunities at the school are plentiful, but they are earned, not simply awarded. So for example, our prospective prefects pitch ideas for initiatives that they would like to introduce into school life. And if successful, they take the lead in implementing them. They're looking for what they feel needs to change and then taking the lead in helping make that change happen. What an amazing preparation that is for the real world. Our unique and bespoke Pathways Mentoring Programme at Sixth Form adopts a coaching approach. Right from the beginning of Lower Six, we meet with each pupil in small career focused groups to mentor them through the process of selecting what they want to do after Sixth Form and beyond. And we talk a lot about confidence, and I think it's important we communicate to prospective students that confidence is a learned skill throughout their time with us. Coming across as convincing and authentic means that the soft skills of collaboration, understanding your role in team, project management and leadership, they're really crucial. And our extensive enrichment programme ensures that these skills are learned, rehearsed and refined throughout the school career. So our students engage in music, drama and debating, and they learn poise, projection, control, and how to argue a case. Sport nurtures resilience, competitiveness, and the role practice in training, play, and success. And creativity and problem solving are also crucial, and our art and design departments are busy, thriving places. I'm talking to you now from our enterprise technology suite, um, and Ent Tech, as it's known, is a totally bespoke subject designed exclusively by us to complement our whole approach to careers. We teach Python programming through what is known as disruptive technologies, such as AI and robotics and virtual reality. And, and it involves students in a wide range of hugely relevant skill building activities and projects to really embed transferable skills into the curriculum. Our students are not only equipped with the ability to use technology, but they're involved in the design and application of it. So Croydon High is an amazing school made up of remarkable girls and dedicated teachers. We're well known for our warmth, our pastoral care, our superb academic results, an outstanding sports department with superb facilities, our breathtaking school productions, our inspirational art department, and our focus on technology and computer science, and of course our, our progression and futures department. Um, I could go on, but I'm, I'm very conscious um, of time. Um, among the very many things that I'm proud of is the way we prepare our students to be real world ready, even when it's a world which we have learned can't be predicted. So thank you very much for listening. We would love to welcome you um, to our beautiful campus. We hope to do that when you're able to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Emma and uh, Croydon High in general. Um, so just to remind everybody watching, we have Q&A happening live, okay? There are going to be no questions and answers at the end of this session because we've got 10 fabulous schools. So the chat box, which is at the bottom menu bar of your Zoom screen, if you hit that, you can select a specific school to ask a question to. Or, or, or more generally, and if it's not picked up by anybody, don't worry, um, myself or my team will get back to you um, in, their, in their absence. We are going to be um, putting up this webinar uh, very soon after it's finished today, so you can watch the whole thing back again, and also on our website, schoolsshow.co.uk, you will find all of these schools and um, links to their websites their brochures, their um, uh, prospectuses, as well as links to all of our past event webinars, uh, all those that are recorded and information about everything coming up. Um, so without further ado, and that little update, again, please keep your questions coming in the boxes. They'll be answered live. We are now going to leave London uh, as we move across country through the mighty portfolio of the GDST and to Kate Reynolds, head of Royal High School in Bath, and where I believe she is in a boarding house. Kate, live to you. 
Hello and welcome to the Royal High School Bath and we've brought you up to the top of one of our two boarding houses to make the most of this our stunning location in the World Heritage Site of Bath. So I'm Kate Reynolds, the head at the Royal High School Bath and we are proud to be unique in the DD DDST family as the only school that offers boarding. And like all the other GDST schools, as Kevin mentioned earlier, our profile is absolutely the same in that we put girls first. We ensure that they have a pioneering contemporary education where everything we do ensures that girls are at the focus of our attention. And this includes in the boarding house. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is the buzz about boarding in Bath, but also the benefits of boarding which is something you may not yet have thought about for your daughter and the next stage of her education. So as I said, I'm currently in Schoolhouse, one of our two boarding houses. This is for our younger girls from years seven to 11, and it has been recently stunningly refurbished to create a cozy, comfortable and inspirational setting for our girls and a home from home for them. On the south side of the campus, we have Gloucester House, which is our boarding house dedicated to sixth form. They also have space to work, to relax, but they also have the added bonus of their own sixth form cafe. So, who boards at the Royal High School? About 25% of our girls board either as full boarders, weekly boarders, or flexi boarders. We have international boarders who've joined us, I think the count is currently from about 19 different countries in the world. And in a minute, I'm going to introduce you to some of our year 11 boarders. And to give you an example, in year 11, we have girls from Thailand, Ukraine, Turkey, Nigeria, China, and the UK. What better way to prepare your daughters for the global world of work? We also have a lot of UK boarders and they board for a whole range of reasons. Some have parents who are in the forces and therefore they come here for their continuity of education. With others, they live too far from Bath to commute in daily. Then we have families where we have both parents working hard in the week and therefore the best education experience for their daughter is to board here in the week and then go home for the weekends for quality family time. But first and foremost, most of our girls here board because boarding is fun. It may not be Hogwarts, it may not be Mallory Towers, but there's still a huge number of benefits that the girls see from boarding. So our boarders will spend their day with the rest of the girls at the Royal High School, but they'll then retire to their boarding houses in the evening at the weekends. Without that travel time, without all the necessity of everything you have to do within a family, they are freed up to focus on their studies, but then to make the most of the stunning facilities that we have here, including our newly opened Steinway Music School. And also they've got time to stay with their friends, to chat, to catch up, to make friends for life. So to finish with, what are the benefits of boarding? The girls here, the boarders learn teamwork. They learn collaboration. They learn to master emotional intelligence on the ups and downs of the journeys that they will have with these friends for life. They learn the importance of peacemaking, but also a problem solving. You can't get away from wood and you're here and you resolve your issues here and together. They learn independence, organizational skills and resilience. And above all, they learn about other cultures and having a broad and open mind. All of this in a friendly and supportive environment, which ensures that they both get the academic excellence, the high grades and quality that is expected of all GBST schools, but also that skill set that is so highly favoured and recognised by universities and employers. So next time you see GDST, the D for day, think of B as well, please. Boarding in Bath. Come and see us here. We are one and a half hours from London and well served from many other parts of England. Think about whether boarding might be just what your daughter needs next. GDST boarding in Bath would be very pleased to show you around. So I'm going to hand you over now to Anastasia, who is one of our Year 11 boarders and is currently our head of boarding. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anastasia and I'm the head of the boarding house. I'm from Ukraine and I've been in Royal High School since year nine and now it became my second home. 
Hi, I'm, right now I'm in year 11 and I'm preparing for my GCSEs, but I'm really looking forward to moving into sixth form because I think it will give me a lot of opportunities to prepare for my future career as a diplomat. Our school offers both IB and A levels, but personally I choose A levels, math, economics, and Spanish because I think this subject, this is the subject that I'm passionate about. Right now we are here in the heart of the school hall, which is located in the main school building. We have two common rooms, one for young years from year seven to year nine, and one for older years for year 10 and 11, as a quiet room where we can prepare for our GCSEs. Also, every evening we have evening tea and charts all together. Hi guys. Hi. Hi, I'm Jan. I'm Sandy, and we'd like to give you a rapid tour of morning. This is a typical year 10 and 11 corridor. Each room has two people in it, but the young years can have a more. Each room has two bedrooms, a sink, and a beautiful view of bar. This is the glass house room, which is the biggest room in this corridor. After school, we come back to our rooms or go to the common room, where we relax. On weekends, the school provides a variety of activities, which is organised by the staff. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in Royal High School Bar. Uh, wow, thank you. That was a, an extremely abrupt end there, so I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> um, but wonderful um, to see uh, the, the the outlier in the GDST, uh, the B that bucks the D and offers a bit of boarding, and indeed to see a boarding house. Um, I imagine those girls are always that tidy, either that or they're woken up very early and given strict instructions to sort out their messy bedrooms. Um, so back we go into the big smoke, into London and into Stratton and Clapham High, where we're joined by Headmaster uh, Milan Sastrania uh, at the Sixth Form Study Centre. So uh, Milan, over to you. Or not. Uh, apologies, everybody. Looks like we are not yet... Um, being joined by uh, Stressman and Clapham. Not to worry, I'll just take this opportunity as a reminder. Um, we are doing live Q&A. Every school has someone manning their, their, Q, their questions and answers and, and we're manning it too. So please use the Hello, Q... Hello, so Milan here. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It's Milan here from Stressman. We, we can hear you, Milan, but you've got no video feed. It says the host has stopped the video, therefore we can't play it. Right, well, just bear with us, because you're, you're, we're broadcasting live, so we'll, we'll switch you on, we'll let you know when we've sorted that. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll just wait for to hear from, from you guys about that, and I'll just carry on filling the filling the space. Uh, oh, I think we have a we have a picture there, guys. If you... No, nope, it's gone again. Um, so please use the Q&A box, not the chat box, okay? There's a chat box that's separate. Please use the Q&A um, box to, at the bottom of your Zoom menu, to ask your questions ahead. We've already seen an amazing array of uh, GDST schools. Um, so interesting. One of them even isn't fully a day school. Um, but uh, it looks like things at Streatham and Clapham are, are coming together now. So I'm just going to give them a bit more time to get themselves set. Um, and uh, Milan, if you just uh, yell when you're ready, and we'll cut straight to you. Thank you. Yes. Um, well, you can. You can hear me now. Right. Yes. Good. Right. Uh, hi, oh. Marcus. Well, it's very good to see you. Uh, I'm Milan Sachania, headmaster of Stratton Clapham High School, and with me, and I think we can just see, is Katie Robinson behind me, who is one of our uh, senior students, one of our prefects, um, and uh, we'll come back to her in a minute. I'm Milan Sachania. I'm vegetarian. Uh, I'm um, of Indian origin. I was born here. My parents are India, uh, Indian. I'm a pianist. You can see I'm in my study. We're not in the sixth room, we're in the room, right? my study, and there's a piano there. Um, and that's me. That's who I am. And I'm a mixture of many, many different things. Every day my identity develops, my core identity remains the same, but uh, every day I change the human being. The question is who is your daughter? What is she to become? How are we going to empower her to find her own unique personality, her character, what she's strong at, what she could develop further, how she's going to change the world? And that's what this school is about. Uh, we at Stephen Clapham High School 
have, um, uh, I think, quite um, uh, an enduring vision, a powerful vision, which is we empower all our young women to nurture, discover, project their own unique identities. Sometimes I'm asked, what does a typical Stratton Clapham High School girl look like? Well, I'm glad to say they are all different. Yes, they're attached to uh, values of kindness, decency, compassion, and so on, but every girl is different. And so it should be the case, because we have to be different. I don't want all the girls here to be turned out like a factory, uh, all the same. What's the point of that? If everyone in the world were just like me, and thought like me, there'd be no point having any conversations on my part, because I'd be just speaking to myself. I would know what the other person is thinking. Uh, we, we want everyone to be different. That's how the girls here go out and make a, a difference to the, to the world. And authenticity, therefore, lies at the heart of who we are. We seek to empower our girls to be authentic. And I, in trying to do that, show them my own authenticity. So I'm a musician. And therefore, I play piano for the girls, with the girls. Just this today, this morning, uh, my uh, study has been uh, the site of uh, at least one assembly uh, this morning. Uh, and the other um, uh, feature that we're going to do later on today at the school is film um, um, a performance for the Royal Opera House at 12 o'clock, again from my study, where one of our girls is shortly to be a, um, a, a solo soprano in uh, the Opera House's The Turn of the School. In showing my authenticity, what I'm good at, what we're saying to the girls and what we all do at the school is, well, we're good at this, I'm good at this, what are you good at? The girls here can do hundreds, thousands of things that I couldn't do. We've got world-class netballers here, swimming athletes. We've got great dancers here. We've got great dramatists and actresses here. We've got great painters here. We have people who can play chess in a way that I couldn't even begin to fathom. That's what they can do. That's not something what I can do. So what we're going to do now is just leave you with those thoughts, that quest for authenticity. And Katie is just going to come here and just say a few words about who she is and what she's uh, aspiring to do. And then we're going to leave you with a very short performance. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm year 13 here at Stratton. I'm a prefect. Um, I have just applied for a BA degree in geography at Cambridge, Durham, Edinburgh, Exeter, and Newcastle. I've already received offers from Exeter and Newcastle. And alongside that, I'm very passionate about music. And in fact, yesterday, I just got my results back for my level four ARSM performance diploma, which I got 14 out of 50 in, which is a distinction. Very good. And so Katie's going to play something for you now. What are you going to play? Uh, we will play the fourth variation from Variations on the Theme by Rossini by Chopin. That's good. See you. Yeah. Great. That's fun. Tuesday, which is the country's celebration of art and music for children. So do visit our website and welcome uh, to Stratford Camp High School. We'd be delighted to see you. Thank you very much. Milan and uh, and um, your your co-performer there. Thank you very much. Wonderful to have uh, a musical interlude um, to our webinar, and most impressive it was too. Um, again, we're going to step out of London and um, head. Gretchen, can you switch off your audio? Thank you. <laughs> um, we're now going to go live to Norwich High um, and we're going to be joined by Head Alison Sefton there in the library, presumably by whispering. Uh, Alison, over to you. Hello, can you hear me? Lovely. Hello, welcome to Norwich High School for Girls. 
My name is Alison Sefton and I'm proud to be the head here. We're a school with strong values, which I believe creates a distinctive spirit. Finding a school for your daughter where she feels comfortable is able to grow academically and socially and upon leaving us will be ready for the wider world as a leader and a team player should be important to you. If it wasn't, I don't think you'd be here today. Being a school that offers those opportunities is important to us. So how do we do it? First and foremost, we put our girls first. Our programmes are tailored to support your daughters as they develop. There is plenty of research to suggest that girls' horizons are broader if they attend a girls' only school. Our girls are known and valued as individuals and we support them in whichever pathway they choose. They also benefit from the fact that everything is designed and developed to meet their educational and pastoral needs so they can be their very best whilst here at school and in beyond. With that in mind, parts of this school have been designed by the girls, such as the library as I'm in now. Pupils met with the designers and had a say in how the space was used, as well as the colour scheme. The curved design aims to give a feeling of exploration. Whilst there are plenty of areas to enjoy a good book, the snuggle stools and hidden bookcases are very popular. Secondly, we are ambitious for every girl. Our girls are intellectually curious, equipped to meet academic challenge and to be innovative. We offer a continuous education for girls aged 3 to 18 and aim to develop skills and attributes for life using our qualities for learning program in the prep and senior school. This is enhanced by the VESPA mindset program in preparation for GCSEs and A-levels. The qualities for learning program was developed to support our girls to be ready for the world beyond school. The program was designed with the World Economic Forum's future skills in mind. A mixture of critical thinking skills and personal attributes, which have been identified as crucial for success, both academically and for each girl's future career. The qualities consist of the six skills necessary for critical thinking. Analysis, interpretation, evaluation, problem solving, creative thinking and reasoning and the three personal attributes identified by research as necessary for success, collaboration, determination, and approach. In the prep school and the early years of the senior school, these advanced skills and attributes are explored through our hand-drawn qualities girls. We've got Anya analysis and Cleo and Colette collaboration here. Embedded as part of Norwich High Education, the quality serves a reminder of how to effectively approach academic work whilst maximizing the many opportunities available in day-to-day -day school life. Throughout the school, we will keep developing these skills and attributes in a way which allows us to deliver our curriculum and the excellent pastoral care given to the girls. Thirdly, we're about more than just examinations. We want to prepare our girls for life beyond school, to do our very best to future-proof them. A year ago, if you were told that children as young as five would be zooming in to remote learning from the comfort of their own home, teachers would be marking work remotely while having online tutorials and pre-recording teaching points, you would think you were in a discussion about schools of the future. But we've been there and are continuing to do that now. Through striving to become an Apple Distinguished School, pupils and teachers have been able to adapt easily with their technical skills continue to develop rapidly each week. Whilst we know that it's, it is possible to learn remotely, we are thoroughly well prepared there is so much more to be gained by being in a school community and working together. My fourth point is that our whole community really matters to us. We encourage our girls to positively support the lives of others in the school and the wider community. They are outward looking and networked. One way in which we show our commitment to this community is through our pioneering Inspiring Females programme a busy programme of events and initiatives across the year shaped by the passionate girls of Norwich High. The most notable of these events include the biggest live summit in 2019 at Stamford Bridge and this year's Inspiring Changemakers online summit delivered in the midst of lockdown to over 26,000 young women across the UK. I met this year's steering committee last week and they're full of ideas for our next event, but I'm not giving away any secrets. Many of you listening today will be in the early stages of your daughter's educational journey. But in talking about community, I cannot miss an opportunity to mention the success of our school leavers at securing a wide variety of courses that suit them as individuals. Our 2020 alumni are headed off to a broad range of pathways chosen by them and supported by us. 
not only are we ambitious for our girls, but they are ambitious for themselves. In closing, I offer a quote that I was reminded of recently. It's from the author Maya Angelou. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. I ask all of our girls to be themselves and to strive to be the very best they can be. I hope that you find that Norwich High School is a school where your daughter could thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Alison, um, from Norwich High School for Girls there. Um, and I'm now bouncing round uh, the United Kingdom like a ping pong ball. We're back into London, back into uh, barely South London, where we'll be joined by Susie Longstaff. <laughs> That's back to high school. Um, so, uh, without further ado, Susie, over to you live at Putney High. Hello, and I'm delighted to welcome you um, to our um, our um, Putney High School. Can you all see me? Will, are we on the screen? Great, okay, I assume we are, because today I'd like to welcome you in our Futures Hub. Um, and as you can tell, um, this is not your ordinary classroom and Putney High School is very much a school that likes to do things differently. And there is no ordinary at Putney High School. We're surrounded by greenery because this is part of our Breathe programme, which focuses on, um, focuses on um, happiness and well-being for our students. So follow me. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our modern, relevant and scholarly ethos and how that pervades um, every part of Putney High School. And with me today, amazingly, I have Matthew, who is our Director of Teaching and Learning and Scholarship. So Matthew, tell us how the academic scholarly ethos pervades all the veins of Putney High School. Well, at Putney, we're all about creating an ethos of scholarship, which allows our girls to become world-beating academics. In the classroom, that looks like exciting, innovating teaching and learning, but we also have a plethora of academic extension opportunities to let the girls excel at the very highest level. Starts in year seven with the badge challenge. In year 10, we have on timetable PPE, cross-curricular lessons. But most noticeably, we have our Athena programme, named Athena after the goddess of wisdom. It's, all, it's a university-style extension programme where girls drill into academia at the top level. So they self-select modules and things they're interested in, like, I don't know, the chemistry of chocolate intersectionality in politics, gender in the Second World War. We want to encourage our girls to ask the big questions at Putney to be independent, reflective learners. Absolutely. Thank you, Matthew. And you mentioned our PPE programme. We also teach debating throughout, um, throughout every year group at Putney High School. Um, and we're actually building at the moment a music, drama, debating and science centre, which will open in the summer term. And I hope that in the heart of it, our debating forum, uh, that we will be training up the next, um, the next female prime ministers um, um, from Putney High School. Watch this space. But this centre also shows our commitment to cross curriculum learning and thinking at Putney High School. So as we move across here, um, the last six months have shown all of us how incredibly important it is to, um, to be forward thinking and to teach our girls skills for the future. At Putney High School, we teach digital tech, we teach design thinking, we teach robotics, innovation and enterprise. And I have many digital wizards at Putney High School. In fact, I have one here who's filming me today. So Vivian, could you come and stand, could you move away from the camera and come and stand here and tell me um, why you love technology so much? Well, I've been at Putney since year seven and I've started coding since year eight, I think it was. From there, I just really fell in love with just the coding, I guess, and I met, went on to do computer science GCSE, and um, I'm in year 13 now, and although I'm not doing computer science for A-level, I'm doing biology, geography, and economics, um, I'm still able to use the skills that I learned at computer science and all the way since year eight um, in my everyday life, especially on the head girl team when I make virtual assemblies every week for the entire school. Thank you, Vivian. And I probably shouldn't tell you that when uh, Vivian in her future career would like to be um, a spy or run GCHQ, please forget I said that now. So I hope you realise this is a chance of how, um, how, you, how we do things differently at Putney High School and a little taster of what makes us different and what we have on offer for a Putney High girl and a GDST girl. And now signing off from, um, from Putney High School, back to the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Putney High and, and Susie there with um, a rather worrying uh, epilogue about uh, a future female spy. Um, 
and um, now we come to a into webinar series first. Uh, last week we we had a, a home counties um, webinar, and uh, we heard from Marina Gardner, who is the outgoing headmistress of another school, but is the incoming head of Oxford High School. So she becomes the first head to join us in two consecutive webinars from two consecutive jobs in the space of six days. Um, Marina, fantastic to see you again and um, over to you and Eleni Rag, head girl from the head's office um, at Oxford High School. Well, thanks so much. And isn't it typical of the GDST and of course Oxford High to get another first in the history of ISS. So good morning, everybody. My name is Marina Gardner-Legg and I am lucky enough to be the head of Oxford High School from January. I have to say that when I heard we were all involved in this, I thought, why are the heads doing this? This is such a job to demonstrate the skills and the future readiness of uh, the girls we are lucky enough to teach. Just look, for example, at the alumni that Oxford's produced, Cressida Dick, head of the Metropolitan Police, Martha Lane Fox and Anushka Patel. So it's all very well talking about young women who stand up, who are going to make a difference. But I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth, as it were. And I am therefore going to pass over to Lenny Rag, who's our current head girl at Oxford. She's speaking from the Ada Benson building, which is a brand new sixth form centre. Lenny, can you tell us how Oxford has helped you to stand out? Yep, hello. <laughs> My name's Lenny and I'm head girl at OHS at the moment. I'm also eagerly waiting to hear back from universities at the moment, where I hope to study medicine next year. Um, I think OHS has really given me the safe space to like figure out what I'm passionate about and start like understanding what the cogs of me do and how I spin. Lenny, I believe that Oxford gives young women a chance to be outstanding. Can you share with us the opportunities you've had to practice your skills in the real world? Yeah, OHS is loaded with opportunities. Um, right from the get-go in year seven, I can I can remember coming in as an 11 year old and just being absolutely amazed by the number of clubs we have here. There must be, I don't know, 40, 50 clubs and signing up for about 20 of them, from like Chinese club. And I'm still a member of the water polo club here. So I can remember um, thinking that was amazing in year seven. But then also as you get a bit older, there are some new things coming along. So as soon as you come to the sixth form, for example, you have the perspectives option um, where you can choose from activities like book buddies, um, or sports leadership where you get the chance to go into other schools and help younger kids um, in primary. Um, yeah, so there's thousands of opportunities to get into. Thanks Lenny and uh, just as a bit of a plug I think I'd like to talk about Emma who ran the economics conference didn't she two weeks ago which was really exciting as well. Um, something I know a lot of parents worry about is the pressure, particularly for girls in a high achieving academic school, which all our schools are. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I think I'd be lying if I said there was no academic pressure, but I think it's important to remember that there's pressure for any girl or boy from the ages of 11 to 18. It's quite a stressful time. Um, at the moment, as I just said, it's really stressful waiting for university decisions. I'm, really not enjoying it, but I know I have four or five teachers who would happily talk to me um, about those stresses because here the students are lovely and the teachers are lovely. So it's all together a very lovely environment. That sounds terrific, I can't wait to join. But I think the other thing I loved about Oxford was the way, despite it's a big school, it felt small. It felt that every single one of you was unique and uniquely yourself. Can you tell us about that at Oxford? Yeah, definitely. I think OHS girls can be given a bit of a sort of rap as just the nerds, you know. We do perform very well academically, but that only just touches the surface of what we're good at. We have amazing students here. I think behind you, you can probably see this is Martha, and she does some awesome coding and she's leading the film club. And then Beth here, she's an awesome artist. And one of my other friends is like a national swimmer. So it's true that we do perform really well academically, but that's not what makes us us. We also have all these other wonderful things that make us completely unique and really cool. 
Cool, I think, is absolutely where we are, isn't it, Lenny? I'd also like to say that the school has a real sense of fun as well. Um, and for those of you who want to see more, do look at the OHS website. There's an interview where the head girl team really put me through my paces. Um, so thank you very much, head girl team. Will, um, Lenny, I am so grateful to you. Thank you. Um, and Will, over back to you from the wonderful, iconic Oxford. Thank you. Marina, Lenny, thank you very much. Marina sort of deftly showing there that she's done this before. That was extremely smooth and um, most impressive to hear from, from Lenny there and, and what, um, what else Oxford High School girls are good at other than being supremely and brilliantly nerdy. Nothing wrong with being nerdy, be more nerdy. It's extremely cool these days, I'm told. Um, shame, because uh, my, my, perhaps my schooling career would have been better if that had been the atmosphere at the time. Um, we are now going over to the, I'm just going to say it, the highlight of, uh, of this for me today, as it's Notting Hill and Ealing High, who are, were responsible in part for educating my partner. I'm very grateful. She's extremely smart and uh, she's a frontline nurse. So I'm extremely proud of her and her work in the NHS. And I'm sure you're still educating um, young women into uh, equally impressive careers. So we're going to be joined by Matthew Schultz, headmaster, live to you, Matthew, at Notting Hill and Ealing High. Thank you very much. And it's certainly the case that I find that Notting Hill and Ealing alumni get everywhere. They permeate society with their successes. So I'm glad to have had another endorsement there. We've been um, encouraging the girls for almost 150 years to in what they can achieve. Um, and I really want to talk today about leadership and voice. I've always felt passionate about this because when I was at school, I didn't necessarily think I was gonna be a leader and I didn't necessarily at school feel encouraged to find my voice. And so what I want all of the girls here is to feel that they can take those steps with confidence and that leadership is not a case of just the extroverts. It's the fact that everybody can make things happen. Um, a year or two ago, a girl called Daria came and knocked on my door and she was only in year seven and she said, I'm doing a swimathon. Um, could I raise a bit of money with a bit of help from the school? And we had a bit of a chat. And a week later, she stood up in assembly in year seven and did a notice for about three minutes to the whole of the school explaining the swimathon that we would be running as a school as a whole, which she led, she organised with our support. And a month later, the pool was filled of girls. Um, swimming back and forth, raising a lot of money for charity. And that sort of empowerment is the culture at the heart of the school. And how we do it above all else is by saying yes to projects that the girls propose. That's how we've had film festivals with um, girls not only making films, but hosting um, well-known figures from that industry talking about how to make it in the world. It's why we've had a dissection club, which was the girl's idea. It's why we have history conventions where the girls are chairing panels of leading academics. It's that encouragement that if they've got an idea, we'll help them make it happen. But that sort of confidence doesn't necessarily just happen because of girls feeling they can knock on the door. It's also just making that throughout, make sure that throughout the school, we're creating those opportunities. Um, so that whichever year the girls are in, they feel I can grab a hold of that and there's a project I can, I can actually make happen. Um, and that really is down to also the fact that we will actually sit the girls down and explain to them, how do you do that? How do you go from an idea to its completion? Um, and that goes all of the way up into the sixth form where we are actually trialing a mini MBA so that girls um, can head out into the world with that sort of business confidence, that ability to project themselves. The second area, as I said, is voice, because they can't make things happen if they haven't got that sort of voice. Um, and it can be taught. Um, I teach all of Year 7, in fact, public speaking throughout the first two terms um, of their time, so that they all get that experience right from the world go, that they can get on their feet and make themselves heard. What I found is that they do that throughout the school. Um, in assemblies, it's the girls who make the announcements. Um, I'm standing here in the school hall, and I think if the camera just zooms across, you can see that we're in the midst of recording our um, concert, um, obviously having to go online. That's, I think, the jazz band about to warm up and make a slightly terrifying noise. And I've been listening earlier this morning because, as usual, it's the girls who introduce their pieces 
um, and explain what they're going to be playing and hearing. And in fact, some of those ensembles are led by the girls. Um, and every time we have a speaker coming in, it's the girls who tend to invite them and it's certainly the girls who who host them. This can pay off in unusual ways. I remember seeing a, um, a engineering lecturer sort of pinned down in chat after a, after a lecture um, asking about applying to study um, engineering at university and he said well it's handy you've um, you've asked that because I'm the admissions tutor and this sixth form said yes I know that's why I asked you um, so it's that confidence that I think we're building them that gives them that spirit and it can go in unusual ways in terms of finding their voice um, on my on my way um, um, out of London um, at the weekend for a short walk I was listening to a radio show, but it was our girls' radio show. Some year 12s have produced a show called um, Inside Out, uh, Topical Issues. And again, that was an idea that they generated and a weekly radio show that they are now producing. So above all else, we're a school um, that empowers the girls to find that voice, to take on projects, and that helps them find their niche and whatever it is they want to do for the future. I'm gonna hand back now so that the band can play, but it's been great to talk to you this morning about Notting Hill and Ealing High School. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Matthew and Notting Hill and Ealing High. Um, bit gutty, we didn't get to see the band play there. I was sort of getting all geared up for, um, for, for a bit of jazz uh, on what is now a sunny-ish morning where I am in London. But we're leaving London once more and um, we're heading to our, our last school, but by no means least to the um, wonderful Shrewsbury High School and Michelle Rees, who is head of period X. And I'm pretty sure judging by the video uh, on my screen, we're about to find out what that is. I certainly don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Michelle, thank you for joining us. Over to you live from Shrewsbury. Good morning. Welcome to Shrewsbury High School. Uh, my name is Michelle Rees and I am the head of period X, which is our enrichment and life skills program in school. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we run that and, and what that offers to our students this morning. So we have a long and proud history of achievement at Shrewsbury High School. And in order for this to continue, we recognise that it's really important for us to focus on meeting the contemporary needs of our students in order for us to prepare them for the world of tomorrow. And it's with that thought in mind that we have developed our enrichment programme called Period X. Now, that's the working name for the programme, but it also reflects its purpose. So X is the unknown number in maths. X, the, the X factor is that hidden quality or talent that's difficult to define. And it's this special quality and this special talent that we seek to find um, in our students. Now we have a really clear ethos for our enrichment programme. It's a whole school programme. So it runs right from reception all the way through to our year 13 students. It's dynamic and engaging. It's motivational for our students. We hope that it helps them to build capacities and interests outside of the classroom. It helps to build self-efficacy for them. And we hope that it develops, we'll just wait for our bell to finish. We hope that it develops some resilience and confidence for our students. So the programme happens period three on a Wednesday and the entire school is all timetabled at the same time to be taking part in period X. This is a fantastic opportunity for our school community to take a pause in the middle of the week, to step back from the academic pressures of school and to clear the head. And that creates a fantastic buzz around our school. It creates energy as we reach that hump in the middle of the week to face the rest of the week after we've all had a break as part of our Period X programme. And hopefully the whole school approach for that, the whole school community will be enhanced next year as our prep students join us on the senior site at Town Walls when we can truly become one school and we can really feel the benefit of that through our Period X programme. Now in terms of organising our programme the students rotate around four themes that they work along so we have mental well-being, physical well-being, personal development and creativity and then we have a whole host of topics 
that the students engage in that are relating to those themes. For example, we have a leadership programme where students, some of our sixth form students are working on self-branding um, and we have um, first aid running right throughout the school. We have some finance advice, particularly to those students leaving us, looking to start work or looking to go to university. And then we, we move that down through the younger years in our school. We have a self-defense programme happening and we do some gardening all the way through to politics. So a whole host of different activities happening. And what I'm hoping to do, Wi-Fi um, doing its job for us this morning, is to visit some of the activities that will be happening in school so you can see how this period Index program works. So first of all, we're going to start off by visiting some of our year seven students who are currently in the middle of their first aid program. So let's have a look at those girls. And I'm hoping that Willa and um, Edmund might come and have a quick chat with me to see um, what they've been doing. So what kind of things have you learned? And we learned the recovery. Okay. And we also learned how to attach a defibrillator to a um, person who's unconscious. Okay, lovely. And how do you think that these skills will help you in your school community and then maybe wider? Um, it's like, you know, if it ever comes to a situation where someone needs CPR, we know how to do it, which could help save someone's life. Brilliant. Okay, and have you enjoyed the first day of course? Fantastic, thank you very much. I'll let you get back to your activity. And we're gonna move outside and visit our basic car maintenance route now. So this is an option activity that the students get to take part in. Some of them have decided to do basic DIY instead of basic car maintenance. And I have some year 13 students here. So Jess and Danny, would you like to come and have a quick chat with me? And you can tell me what kind of things you've been doing in basic car maintenance. So <laughs> we have changed the tire. So we've learned how to change a tire, which we think is a great skill, especially if you're out on the roads by yourself. It means you don't have to rely on anybody else to come. We've also learned um, essential things to put inside the car in case of any emergency that happens. So kind of an emergency kit, spare tire, spare tire. <laughs> and then we've also learned like inside the car. So how to just looking at the oil levels and these need to be right. Fantastic, thanks. How do you think these skills are gonna help you when you leave us? Independence mainly, so not relying on anybody else if you get in a tricky situation on the road. Yeah, we can trust in our own knowledge and be at one with the car, <laughs> make sure we know yeah. what we're doing. Brilliant, thank you very much girls. I'm gonna move on here, and we're gonna go down to our gardening group. So we have three gardens in school. We have, um, the, the orchard, we have our science garden, which houses quite a big greenhouse. And we also have our walled garden, which is where we're going to head this morning. Now this garden has been completely renovated for our period X programme. And the students themselves have dug over the entire area. It's been quite a feat to get this going. And here's Sim greeting us Hello. in the garden. Good morning. Welcome to the garden. Thank you. And we can see that this is very much a work in progress. Right, I'm just going to jump in there because I'm afraid I think we've lost Rosemary there. Um, a bit of, I, I suspect, technical um, problems from... Uh, well, I expect from the um, the Wi-Fi cutting out and, and switching onto a mobile network. Hopefully, we'll we'll hear back from them very soon. But, but um, in the meantime, uh, it was great to see there. Uh, you know, lots of different things, not just academics. So it's really important that you understand as parents when looking at schools, there's so much more than pure academic grades and the impacts of those other things. Some of those we might term soft skills, are absolutely crucial. Uh, more so than ever into not just getting a place at a top university, but um, indeed getting getting a start on, on the careers that are and, 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 you know, increasing your employability. I'm afraid, I think I'm going to um, say that we've, we, we, we've lost Rosebury there. They had a good amount of time. Very sorry not to see them close out their, their brilliant session there. But, you know, um, we are all at the whim of the uh, shocking state of uh, Britain's broadband and uh, Chinese 5G network at the moment. Um, but what an amazing 
insight into the GDST stable. We saw 10 schools today from uh, quite a fair few from London and around the country, not the least of which was, of course, the, the, the Royal School in Bath, which does, despite the D in GDST, offer some boarding. Um, there are 23 schools in the GDST table and, uh, stable and two academies, so uh, that's not all of them. They're a really impressive outfit, so do have a look online. These schools are obviously fabulous, and Shrewsbury have popped up, and I will go back and, um, and, uh, and let Michelle finish. Uh, so, Michelle, over to you again. Michelle, you're on mute, I'm afraid. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Fantastic. So our programme is dynamic by definition. We've got a whole host of activities happening and they change all the time. The world is constantly changing and we recognise that we must change with it as a school. The needs of our students is constantly changing and so it's critical for us to adapt our programme to, to ensure that it's tailor-made for the students that come through each year. We wanted to be true to our core pillars when we were designing our programme, so character, achievement, endeavour, and it's vital for us to provide opportunities to build skills for those things to happen. And ultimately, we wanted to be true to our GDST vision, where girls learn without limits and achieve beyond the bounds of expectation. And it's really important that we provide them with the skills to continue to do this when they leave us. Um, we're really pleased you're able to visit us at Shrewsbury High School and hopefully you can come and visit us and we can um, show you around our school and, and show you just how fantastic it is. Thank you very much. Michelle, thank you very much indeed and, and uh, lovely to see you from Shrewsbury there and well done for coming back into the fray. That wraps it up everybody from our, from our 10 GDST schools and from me to all of them and the GDST um, outfit in general. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to see you all in these lockdown days and uh, great to see all of you showing such a diverse range of schools, even though you're all um, part, part of the same organisation. Really wonderful expression of your individuality there. Um, so in closing, everybody, please do join us on Tuesday, the 7th of December at 10.30 for our next webinar, which is entitled How to Choose an Independent School. It's a really exciting one, a bit different to this. Um, and it will be a discussion between uh, my co-director, Charles Bonus, and Barnaby Lennon, who's current chairman of the ISC, former headmaster of Harrow, uh, former Eastern Beacon, former deputy headmaster of Highgate School. In fact, he was my head at Harrow for my final year there. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing this duologue. They'll be in conversation discussing how to choose an independent school um, and giving you all the sort of interesting insights that you should be thinking about as parents when, when making this um, crucial decision for your children. Please don't forget to keep up to date with all our events, all our past events which are um, uh, included on our website, schoolsshow.co.uk and you'll find um, the recordings of all of our shows. This one will be up a bit later today. All the prospectuses on all of our exhibiting schools. It's just a plethora of information. So I really encourage you to look at that, please. Once again, today, thank you to our schools. Thank you for everyone watching. And we look forward to seeing you again uh, on the 7th of December. Uh, forgive the sirens. Goodbye and have a wonderful day. <laughs>